I am most thankful, and this is my message, really sweet, simple, I hope. I titled this, Thank God for Our Great Salvation. It is a good thing, if we can put up this, yeah. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name. And I connected this to Hebrews 2, 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? I was sharing with Pastor Marty that word great is an unusual word. It's not used uh, like other words like megalos in Greek, which means great. But it's an intensified word that means, it's one of those Greek words that you have to have about five, six different English words to describe it. And if I can do this, I'll put it like this. It means great, large, vast, mighty. <laughs> vast salvation, mighty salvation, large salvation. I thank the Lord for, we can even say, put that all together, maybe in one English word for us, awesome salvation. And that's what I'm most thankful for today. That's my simple message, and I'm going to give you three reasons why. I am most thankful, and you are saved today, you should be most thankful for your sal great salvation that you have. You don't realize how great, how vast, how large, how big, how mighty, how awesome your salvation is. I don't realize it. I'm beginning to realize it more and more as I walk with the Lord and thank God. But you ought to thank the Lord for this. And, and I'm going to give you three reasons why I say to thank the Lord and keep thanking and be thankful for this vast, great, mighty salvation. If we realize what this salvation is, we would be most thankful and keep thanking and we'd be thanking him all the time. Can I give you three simple reasons, biblical reasons? Number one, we ought to thank the Lord for this great salvation, for the perfect standing that this salvation gives us, the perfect standing that we have before God. This great salvation that we have, and which I should be thankful for, because this great salvation has given me a perfect standing before a holy God at all times. Before Christ, or be outside of Christ, I should say, we stand as condemned sinners under the wrath and judgment, as Quickie said, under the wrath of God, the judgment of God. We, outside of Christ, deserve the judgment of God Amen. because of our sins. We don't realize how awful those sins are. It is rebellion against God. So outside of Christ, we stand, and everyone who's outside of Christ today, stand condemned before a holy God. But once you realize that Jesus came to bring, to take that condemnation on himself, and all of the judgment of your sins, past, present, and future, have been placed on Jesus once for all, at one particular time, he bore that judgment completely on the cross so that you won't have to experience that judgment. You will understand your perfect standing before God. And once I accept what Jesus has done for me and receive him as my only Savior, I stand perfect in God's sight. Perfect, as though I have never committed a sin in the beginning. Amen. The word justified, as someone said, you take the word, break it down, justified, just as if I'd never sinned. I stand justified as if I've never sinned before God. This perfect standing means this. I have total forgiveness in Jesus. That means that all my sins, when Jesus died, did he not die for all of your sins? From birth to death? Same for me. 
So when I come to Jesus and put my faith in him alone for my salvation and embrace him as my savior, the Bible tells us in Ephesians 1 said, in him we have forgiveness. Colossians 2.13 tells us he's forgiven us of all our sins. Not just the past. I don't know how many Christians I meet because of their teaching think only when I come to Christ that only my past sins are forgiven. When you come to Christ and embrace him as your savior, your, all your sins from birth to death has been forgiven. Now, maybe I can visualize this like this. Say this is your life from birth. You're born with sin, did you know that? We're born from Adam's sin. And you sin as you go along, right? And, uh, and all these sins, the Lord knows every one of them, right? And so you may be in your life over here and you get saved right here. So when the Lord forgives you, he doesn't just forgive you the past. Say you're age 30. And so he doesn't just forgive you of past 30 sins. But he, when you come to Christ, all these sins were laid on Jesus. Right? So when you come to Christ, Hubert, come here for a minute. Let's say, this, I've got a big book because it represents your sins. <laughs> come here. Big book. I need, what are you laughing at, Harold? I need a bigger book for you. <laughs> but let's say that just all his sins, <laughs> all right, on, her, on, on, on our brother uh, because of his sins. He's condemned with this. He's condemned. Did you know the word uh, forgive, a fee me? A fee me means to send away and to send off. That's what the word forgive means to send off and send away. That's where every time you see the word forgive. So when you come to Jesus, because these sins have been nailed to the cross, when you come to Jesus and to the cross, he takes all those sins from birth to death and sends them away. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed your transgressions. So therefore I stand justified just as if I've never sinned before God. But it's more than that. Not only does this perfect standing mean perfect forgiveness, but it means perfect righteousness. So in place of that, that would be enough right there, amen? I'd be like Adam that never sinned. But in place of that, the Lord gives you with this perfect standing, the righteousness of Jesus. How righteous was Jesus? Perfect, right? So what happens to you is when you come to Jesus, uh, Kelvin, you're tall, but I think I can at least put this around you. When you come to Jesus, God not only takes those sins that I said, he also puts the righteousness of Jesus over you. Now the Protestant reformers used to say foreign righteousness or alien righteousness, and what they mean by that is this righteousness is not your own. It's not your righteousness bettered, you know, or made better. But this righteousness that God gives you when you put your faith in Jesus is actually the righteousness of Jesus. So you stand before God without those sins that I mentioned, and you stand before God robed in the righteousness of Jesus. So anybody gets saved today, I'm as, they're as righteous as I am before God. Now the cool thing about this is, this righteousness that I have begins to change my righteousness. That's called sanctification. But however it changes me doesn't alter this. You see what I'm saying? Maybe I'm not as changed as you are, but I, we both have this righteousness. I don't have any more of the righteousness of Christ than you. So we're all robed with the righteousness of Jesus. So now I stand before God 24 seven. You say, what if I sin? I still have the righteousness of Christ. See? Now what happens is, I begin to get convicted. I need to change this on the inside, so I repent, and this begins to change on the inside. But this doesn't change this. This has nothing to do with my obedience. This is a gift from God. By grace are you saved through faith. That's it. 
So I stand before God totally righteous. Someone said, yeah, but that means I can go out and do it. When you're really totally righteous before God and he, you've been roped, you say, man, I, thank you, Jesus. And you want to live for him. This motivates you to live holy. Otherwise, you're trying to live holy to get holy. But you're living holy because you are holy in Christ. See the difference? So you are robed in the righteousness of Jesus. I have a perfect standing before God, which means this. This is why I thank him all the time, which means that I can come to the Lord anytime, anywhere, even after I've blown it, and I come right in his presence, and he hears me and welcomes me in his presence as a father. Why? Because I've, did, uh, because I've grown in sanctification this far? No, because he sees the righteousness of Jesus. So that's why I'm thankful today for my salvation. Aren't you? Amen. That you have a perfect standing before God 24-7. Even the Christian who backslides still has that perfect righteousness. He can come to God's presence at any time and get restoration, right? Because he has the perfect righteousness of Jesus. That's our standing before God. He made him, Jesus, who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. I have the righteousness of God over me. And then, for by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. So I am perfected by his perfect righteousness. I thank the Lord for my salvation because of the perfect standing before God that I have. But let me give you another reason why I'm so thankful to the Lord for his salvation. I thank the Lord for this great salvation to the Lord because not only for the perfect standing that I have before God all the time, that in, by the way, that in itself should, be, I should, that should motivate me to thank and praise him all the time and to live for him. Right? That, 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 that truth right there. But I also thank the Lord for his perfect salvation, his great salvation, because of the powerful grace he's giving to us. This great, magnificent, vast salvation, caris, grace. Grace. God, do you take the words grace, G-R-A-C-E, the acronym. G, God's, R, riches, A, at, C, Christ. E expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. That's what grace is. It's free unearned because Jesus earned it at the cross. This grace includes three things. It's God's unearned ability, his free unearned ability to live the Christian life, his unearned blessings, and his unearned gifts. But I'm zeroing in on the first one. Unearned ability, the power of this grace. We never th realize how powerful this grace is. You know, they had grace, we can put up, uh, um, yeah, John 1, 16. And of his fullness, we have all received grace for grace. He's talking about Jesus' fullness. There was grace in the Old Testament, but now under Jesus and the New Testament, he's saying there's a fullness of grace. In other words, if it's like a factory or a, 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 a let's say a company has stocks of, of, of inventory of things, of whatever it is, they have box upon box upon box upon box all the way up to the wall, right? All stacked up, all this supply. That's the idea here. It's grace upon grace upon grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. That's how much grace you have in Jesus. And that grace that you have in Jesus is working powerfully in your life, supernaturally in your life. This, 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 I thank the Lord for this salvation, this saving grace. I mean, some of you know, consider your testimony. This saving, powerful grace saved you out of sin, took you out of the kingdom of Satan and brought you into the kingdom of God. That's how powerful this grace is. But more than that, I thank the Lord that this grace keeps me. Well, if it was up to the enemy, he would steal my salvation tomorrow. If it was up to the enemy, he would destroy me tomorrow. But I'm glad that though this grace keeps me in his hands. Aren't you glad of that? 
This is powerful enough to keep you. The same God that saved me can keep me. All right? So I thank the Lord for this powerful keeping grace and his overcoming grace. He gives me this powerful grace to overcome all the negativities in this life. And there are plenty of them, guys. Amen. 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 How many have gone through some negativities? Amen. If you haven't, you're lying. <laughs> and you ought to repent, right? Every Christian believer goes through stuff. Bad stuff. And never, all, never receive any teaching that the closer you get to the Lord means you will have less trials. That's not true. The difference is you have his grace and his power to go through those trials and become an overcomer in Jesus and even get stronger by his grace. He enables us, that this grace powerfully enables us to do his will. I can do, once I become a Christian, in other words, this powerful grace is enough to help me live the Christian life victoriously. I cannot live the Christian life without this powerful grace. I need this powerful grace to sustain me, to keep me, and to help me overcome things in this life. Thank God this grace is given to me through his word, and through the Holy Spirit, but thank God his grace is powerful stuff. Turn to somebody and say, his grace is powerful stuff. <laughs> it enables me, it restores me, as I shared this earlier. This grace restores me. When I drift away, brings me back. Even when I mess up, it restores me. Even when I'm down, it restores me. This, it's powerful stuff, man. His grace is guiding grace. It, it moves me in the right direction. It moves me in the right direction. More than that, this grace, this powerful grace, I thank the Lord for because it's transforming me. I'm not only saved by this grace, I'm changed by this grace. I mean, if it can change a sinner to be like Jesus, that's pretty powerful stuff. If it can change a person to be an ungodly person to a godly person, that's, a par that's powerful stuff. If it could change an unloving person to be a loving person, that's powerful stuff. If it could change an impure person to be a pure person, that's, a, that's powerful stuff. If it could change an unbelieving person to be a believing person, that's powerful stuff. That's powerful stuff. Now, you probably heard in the news about Kanye West got saved, and you need to pray for him. Uh, he gave his life to the Lord. Greg Laurie, well, I heard Greg Laurie, pa pastor, talk about it. He said Christians are ready to pounce on him for the mistake he made, or he didn't say this right, or he's, he doesn't have all this theology right. Give him time to grow, guys. You didn't have it all together when you got saved. But good night, look at his life. He was way, off, he was way, way out there. <laughs> when I say way out there, he was way out there. And to see him talk about Jesus being the king, something happened, guys. How can that happen to somebody? I've literally seen it at the mission. People that were, uh, that were so far away from the Lord, all of a sudden, come, their lives are changed. That's, power, that's the grace of God working in a person's life. God's working in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So if you have something in your life right now that you can't overcome, understand his powerful grace can help you. And you ought to thank the Lord. You got something the world doesn't have. Yeah. All the psychology, all the, all, the, all the wisdom of this world cannot help a person who is bound by sin. But the powerful grace of God can break things, can enable you, can lift you up out of depression, can encourage you, can do things that man cannot do. Yeah. You ought to thank the Lord. That grace is in you working right now. It's working in you right now. And it's continue working in you. And if you want more of it, it's up to you how much you want. How much how much how many you want more powerful grace working in you? Then you gotta tap into it. You gotta tap into it. You gotta be hungry for it. You gotta desire it. You gotta go where the grace is where the faucet is. <laughs> if I'm thirsty, I'm not gonna go to the wall for get a drink of water. I'm gonna go where the faucet is. Well, the faucet is the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. So I'm going to go to the grace faucet. 
<laughs> and the more grace you receive, the more you give it out too, by the way. You can't give something out if you don't have it. So the more grace works in you, the more grace comes out of you. I'm going to go for the powerful grace of God today. It doesn't just give you gifts and blessings. Yes, thank God, that all that grace, God's riches. But those God's riches are powerful riches. It's powerful stuff. I thank the Lord that I'm not living this Christian life on my own ability. I can't do it. Sometimes I'll witness to somebody, I'll say, uh, I'm, I'm trying to lead them to the Lord, and they say, I can't live the Christian life. I said, well, praise God, join the club. <laughs> I can't either. I can't. Can you live the Christian life by yourself? None of us can. But I can do all things through Christ, who gives me the strength. Powerful grace. We have something the Old Testament believer didn't have. We have the Holy Spirit in us. This comes via Holy Spirit. So I thank the Lord today for the perfect standing to have that for before the Lord. That doesn't change. I come to a holy God any time with the righteousness of Jesus, and he accepts me, even when I don't feel like coming into his presence. Every time I preach on this, or some, something similar to that, I get the picture in my mind, I don't know why, but those of you who are older can remember this, JFK, when he was in the Oval Office and his children were underneath his feet and they're right in the Oval Office, you know, playing around and I think, them, and I, I don't know why I get this picture. Well, Jesus, you know, he's in the Oval Office, he's in the thro on the throne above every other throne and we can come in and even though, if we, even if his ch children did something bad, which they probably did sometimes, right? Children being children, they still are welcome to come into his presence. See, we got to get this mentality of Romans 11:6. 6. If it's of grace, it is no longer of works. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. You cannot mix grace and works. They don't go. Grace produces works, but it's not grace and works. Everything is entirely by his grace. His grace saves me. His grace empowers me. His grace changes me. Everything is by grace through faith. In fact, Romans 4, 16, I think it says, it's of faith, it's of faith that it might be by grace. So faith is the only way that receives the grace of God. The only arm that receives the grace of God. And works don't do it. You can't have works in grace. It's the grace of God from the beginning, it's the grace of God in the middle, it's the grace of God at the end. Thank God for his powerful grace today. And the third reason why I thank the Lord for this mighty, vast, wonderful salvation is I thank the Lord, this salvation doesn't stop here, but I thank the Lord for the promise this salvation gives me. I thank the Lord for the promise of the glorious future that we have. Guys, this is not it. I'll share it with my Sunday school class. Let's say from this wall to that wall is a million years. Okay? And eternity is beyond the walls, correct? Your life, let's say this is 100 years. Some of us may have lived 100. May, I don't know if anybody will, but it's a possibility, right? Some may live 80, 70, 60. What's this compared to eternity? A sliver. Why do we put so much focus on this when we have eternity to look forward to? And here's the beautiful thing. This salvation has given me a promise of a good future that I can't even explain right now in my message. It is a glorious future. Look at some of these promises, guys. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place, he's preparing a place for you right now. I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, you may be also. Here we have the, the promise of his coming back again to receive us to himself. If Jesus promised that, I believe it's going to happen. Man may promise me something, but it may not happen. But Jesus promised he's coming back for me. He's coming back for me, guys. He's coming back for you if you're saved. That's a promise. 
And I believe it's closer than you think. It's a sure promise. The promise of his return. And that means when I see him, I will, I will see him. He will come again. I will see him. And I will be like him. That's what it says. Look at 1 John 3, 2. Beloved, now we are the children of God, and it has not been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So when Jesus, when I see Jesus, and by the way, I have the hope even behind uh, that when I die, I'll be, be absent from the body to be present with the Lord. I don't have any hope of being in the ground and staying there, but I have the hope that once I die, my soul, the real me, sees Jesus. But if that doesn't happen, I'll see Jesus when he comes back again. I have a future, guys, don't you? I have the promise of the Lord's return. I have the promise of being transformed when I see him. My body, my soul, and my spirit, all three will be transformed to be like Jesus. I will have a glorified body like Jesus, resurrected body. A physical, tangible, eternal body like Jesus' body. This is not it. How many glad for that? No matter how healthy you are. <laughs> this is not it. I thank the Lord for the promise I will someday have an eternal glorified body to enjoy this, another promise of this new earth we're going to have. I don't know why in Christian circles we don't emphasize the new earth as we should. But the Bible talks about a new heaven and a new earth. Not just heaven, but a new heaven and a new earth. Our Jehovah Witness friends talk about that, about the earth. And uh, I remember having a professor at, at Moody say this, and it's always stuck in my mind. He said, every time Bible, evangelical, Bible-believing teaching does not emphasize a particular point, the cults will take it and emphasize it, but twist it. And so, I want to emphasize to you, there will be a new earth. A tangible, perfect, beautiful earth that I will touch and enjoy. That's my future. That's your future. How many glad that salvation has brought that to you? Amen. Amen. Don't live like you're going to live on this earth forever, guys. This is going to pass away. It's going to be burned, whether some say it's going to be totally dissolved. Some say it's going to be like burned and just start over. I don't care how he does it. It's going to be a new earth. New earth. And I have the promise of reunion of all believers. I was thinking the other day of how many believers I know and are now in glory. My goodness, that, that tells you when you're getting old, right? A lot of people that went on to be with glory, by, by not only my, part of my family, but friends. You're going to be reunited with all your loved ones that have gone on before. But more than that, you're going to, be re, you're going to have a reunion with all believers that you read about, all believers in the Bible. Yes. Wow, what a party. Amen. 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 What a promise we have. What a future we have as Christians. The best is yet to come. That's why I thank the Lord today. I thank the Lord I live in this country. I thank the Lord for things that I have. You know, Pat and I then always were blessed financially like, like we are now, and we thank the Lord for it. But we were, there are times we were very lean. Lean, 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 lean. And you too, Pastor Marty. And many of others here. And I, I don't want to go back to that. Amen. But I'll tell you this. If the Lord took everything away from me like Job, I would still serve the Lord. Amen. I hope that's your attitude too. These are just the extra goodies. <laughs> How many glad for the extra goodies? Amen. Amen. I thank the Lord for my salvation today for these three reasons. The perfect standing, the powerful grace that's working in me, and the beautiful, glorious promise of a future that I can't even describe to you. I can't describe to you. The best book that I've read on it is by Randy Elkhorn called, uh, I forgot now, what's it called? Heaven, isn't it? Yeah, heaven. Yeah, 
Uh, I would really encourage everyone to read that. If you want a really in-depth study on heaven, read that book by Anne Randy Orca. I mean, he goes into everything, about animals, everything, and being on a new earth. But I'm glad for my salvation. I'm thankful. I'm more than glad. I am most thankful for my salvation in Jesus. And that's what you should be most thankful for. And this is what you should praise him for all the time. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. How many glad for your magnificent, vast, big, large, awesome salvation that you have? Sozo is the verb. So it means to save, but Derek Prince, a uh, Bible teacher in the past, said this, and I always remembered it. Salvation, the totality of it could be that's God's total provision. God's total provision in Christ for us. God's total provision in Christ for us. It's total. It covers everything. How many glad you're saved this morning? Amen. We're saved, we're being saved, and we shall be saved, biblically. But if you're here today and you're not sure of that, you're not sure you have this great salvation, you can be sure. These things have I written unto you that you may believe, that you may know that you have eternal life. You can, K-N-O-W, you can know that you have eternal life. Not wish so, you can know you have eternal life. 1 John 5, 13. So if you don't know, you're not sure, the good news is you can be sure. Would you let me know to pray with you and for you if you're not sure that you want this? You want to know that you have this great salvation. Would you raise your hand? Give me the privilege to pray with you if you're not sure. Okay. You're not sure? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Anybody else? Let's stand to our feet. As a Christian, by the way, this also ought to make not only motivate you to thank him and praise him, but ought to motivate you to share this great salvation with others. The lady that raised her hand, would you give me the privilege to pray with you right now? Would you come forward and... Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray with her. You're not just coming to this church. You're coming to Jesus. You're embracing Jesus. You're receiving Jesus. So pray this out loud, not to me but to Jesus. Say it with her, guys, to encourage her. Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus I, need to be saved. I need to be saved. I believe you are the Son of God who died on the cross for my sins. All my sins. All my sins. I believe this. I believe this. And you rose from the grave. And you rose from the grave. I believe in the resurrection. I believe in the resurrection. I come to you, Lord Jesus. I come to you, Lord Jesus. For my salvation. For my salvation. Save me, Lord Jesus. Save me, Lord Jesus. I receive you, Lord Jesus. I receive you, Lord Jesus. As my personal Savior. As my personal Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus, Thank you, Lord Jesus. For, saving me now. for saving me now. And help me to live for you. And help me to live for you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I am saved. I am saved. Give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. You know. Christian during this Thanksgiving it's good to share the gospel with your relatives I remember one time it was shortly after I was saved I wanted to witness to all my relatives at Thanksgiving and I just said Lord give me the opportunity to share the gospel with all my relatives at the Thanksgiving table <laughs> so I just waited I didn't push it I just waited for the right opportunity and it came and I had the opportunity to share Jesus with all my relatives well, thank the Lord that, uh, to thinking of the, who was around that table at that time, at least two of them I know for sure are now with the Lord. 
that because I shared the gospel. So maybe you're a Christian believer and you just need more boldness to share the gospel. Ask the Lord. He'll give you that boldness. Your children need to be saved. Your brothers and sisters need to be saved. Your parents, if they're still living, need to be saved. Your uncle and aunt need to be saved. And we have the God, thank God we have salvation that we can share with them. Amen? So we're going to close with a song. If you sense the need to come and pray at an altar, you'd be free to come. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just thank you for a great, awesome yes. salvation. Yes, Lord. Lord, we help us to always appreciate and be most thankful for that yes. truth, that reality that we have in Jesus. But Lord, help us to share this beautiful truth with others so they can receive this great, awesome salvation. Give us new boldness in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching the presentation from the New Life Christian Fellowship. We are located at 6235 West North Avenue, Oak Park, Illinois. For more information, call us at 708-848-2441. Thank you. May the Lord Jesus Christ truly bless you.